Now we're going to examine the knee looking for any effusion or swelling that may be indicative of a Baker cyst, a bursitis, uh, maybe an arthritic condition. So this is really based on anatomy. So looking at the inferior pole here of the patella, kind of right in through here is where we'd have that prepatella bursa. So we're looking for any tenderness. Uh, it might be a little bit inflamed. We're going to look at the pezanserine uh, tendon insertion when we turn the leg out this way, following those tendons down right into this area here. Kind of palpate there once again, feeling for any inflammation, swelling, tenderness. And then we'll bring the, the leg back here. Now we're going to palpate behind the knee in the popliteal fossa. So to get our fingers in there, you might feel a, a palpable mass, uh, almost like a little ball back there. It's usually not too tender, but mechanically can cause a lot of problems for the patient. Now, one thing to recognize with a, a Baker cyst is that it's really not the problem, but more indicative of an underlying problem. And that could be a, an arthritic knee or a torn meniscus where fluid will seep through between the uh, gastroc and the hamstrings and, and form a little pouch. Uh, often we'll have our patients go back to their medical doctors and have it assessed. In some cases, they may choose to drain it, but a lot of cases they won't because the surgeons actually want to identify what the underlying cause is rather than drain it and have it recur all the time. Having said that, draining it in some cases can offer a temporary relief to the patient and improve their range of motion. So another thing to look at now is effusion. So if we bring the leg down like this, we're just looking for a generalized swelling or inflammation. What you want to do is um, with your hands kind of palpate medially and laterally. And if you see some fluid, you almost want to push it up and around the knee, bring it back down and see if you can displace that fluid. And if you do see a bit of swelling, you're going to get in there and palpate. And one of the things you're looking for is to make sure this isn't pitting edema. So in pitting edema, if I were to push in with my thumbs and then release, you would see a divot there. There'd still be an indentation. And that can uh, be indicative of maybe a serious underlying pathology, possibly related to the kidneys, for example. So that's something if you do notice, you want to refer your patient back to your medical doctor. So I'd like to mention a couple of points regarding osteoarthritis and stress fractures. So once we've examined the patient, we're also assessing for, you know, various conditions that actually might be pre-existing prior to them coming in. So if there is osteoarthritis going on, we'd evaluate the knees. Uh, you can see here, Lindsay's, I mean, she's quite active and strong, but let's say we had a patient here on the table where there was maybe some muscle atrophy, or perhaps uh, when we were examining the knee, a varus deformity. Uh, we'd get in here and, and palpate, once again, assessing for any crepitus or pain, joint line tenderness, you know, laterally and medially. All those can be indications of osteoarthritis. Uh, one of the things we'll often see in our patients uh, is that, you know, especially in sedentary patients because of work or lifestyle, is that their glutes will not be activating. And the glutes are quite important as shock absorbers, and they help to disperse forces throughout the whole kinetic chain. So if your glutes aren't working properly, it can cause a lot of knee problems. So one way that we'll assess the patient is, uh, have you lying on your right side there, uh, Lindsay? Is just, you know, simply looking at the gluteus medius. So we're gonna have you uh, get straight leg here, holding in that position, and I'm gonna push down, I want you to resist, okay? So here we go, we're pushing down, resist, resist. So as you can see here, Lindsay is quite strong. Yeah, okay, one more time. There we go, good, good. Nice. Yeah, often in most patients with knee problems, we'll actually see that leg drop right away and they're just not engaging those glutes. Another thing that we assess for, I'll go flat on your back here, which I mentioned earlier were tibial stress fractures. Now, if you have a runner who's out there putting on a lot of mileage and they're complaining of uh, medial shin pain, for example, if it were more of a tendinopathy and inflammation or restriction, that might be, you know, really sore that first kilometer or so, but then it's really going to start to feel better as they run. And it usually will respond to conservative care and treatment. However, if that patient is complaining of excruciating pain that just gets worse and worse and is not responding to anything, you'd want to suspect a stress fracture. And at that point, we'd refer the patient back to their medical doctor and hopefully have them have a bone scan. But how we assess it is we would palpate the tibia, looking for any deformities, any tenderness, any swelling. And then we, we do some percussion. So we tap along the length of the bone and we're looking for maybe a jump sign or some lingering pain, something that the patient lets us know is, is really sore. And another thing that we find really useful is vibration. So using a tuning fork, I'll just grab one from over here. 
and uh, bring it back. So this is really simple yet really effective by putting vibration through the bone here. If there's any small stress fractures or injury, that vibration will elicit a painful response. So just gonna put it here. Can you feel the vibration? Mm -hmm. no. Good. Any tenderness? Mm -hmm. No. So I can literally feel the, the vibration coming through as I do this just along the whole length of the tibia. Great. So those are some key points when, when examining the knee. So uh, hopefully that this video will be a great resource for you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, reach out to us and check out all our other videos.